In today's video, I will teach you how to do a basic hoop isolation. Now, the key to doing a basic hoop isolation involves rotating your hoop in a circular motion around a center point while maintaining your hoop in one spot, giving the appearance that your hoop is magically floating in midair. To get started, go ahead and grab a medium to smaller size hoop. Extra large hoops can sometimes be a little bit more challenging to isolate the hoop with. So I recommend starting out with a smaller hoop or a hoop that works best for you. Now once you have your hoop, go ahead and take your hoop and put it in a vertical position in front of you, gripping the hoop overhand at the bottom center part of the hoop. Now, it doesn't matter which hand you use to grip the hoop, you can either use your left or right hand, and you can also uh, isolate your hoop in both directions as well. So go ahead and grab that hoop at the bottom center point of the hoop. Next, uh, when isolating the hoop, you wanna find that center point of the hoop because that's the point at which you're going to want to isolate the hoop around. So uh, one way of looking at it is it can be like drawing a circle with a compass. So imagine that the center point of your hoop is the needle of your compass, and as you rotate the hoop, imagine that that is your pencil as you are drawing, drawing your circle, making a perfect circle with your compass. So once again, you have your center point, and as your hand is gripping the hoop at the bottom, you're going to rotate that hoop around that center point, and then as you rotate the hoop and your hand gets to the top of the hoop, that's when you might realize, wow, I cannot uh, grip the hoop in this position anymore, or, or I can't go any, go any further with the hoop. So at this point, that's when you're actually going to roll your hand in the hoop, and the hoop's actually going to go across the back of your palm, and you're going to reestablish your grip on the other side of the hoop, catching the hoop on the inside of the hoop. And then uh, once you reestablish your grip, that's when you can go ahead and continue isolating the hoop in a continuous hoop isolation. Oftentimes, the most vulnerable part of this trick when performing an isolation can occur when you roll your hand inside the hoop and the hoop travels over the back side of your hand. It's at this point in the trick when the hoop can sometimes stray away from the center point that you are isolating your hoop around. So if your isolation appears to be very wobbly or that hoop is going every which way, I recommend being aware of when you actually start that grip switch and you roll your hand inside the hoop. Because if let's say you start rolling your hand too early inside the hoop and that hoop starts to fall and your isolation is starting not to look like an isolation, then I recommend as you revolve your hoop to just wait a little bit longer before you make that grip switch and roll the hoop over the back side of your hand. When you start and finish rolling your hand inside the hoop may vary, depending on how fast you rotate your hand and the type of isolation you perform. I recommend starting your hand roll after having rotated your hoop about a quarter rotation or more from the bottom. As the hoop travels over the back side of your hand, reestablish your grip on the other side, grabbing the hoop within about a quarter rotation from the top of your hoop to continue your isolation. Also, something else to think about 
as you roll your hand at the top part of the hoop, you really want to make sure that you follow through with your hand roll. Because let's say if you are rolling your hand and all of a sudden you stop in the middle of your roll, then that's another point where the hoop can start to wobble a little bit or uh, your isolation might go off course. So uh, you really want to make sure that as you roll your hand, you follow through in a curved like motion to reestablish your grip on the other side. If at all possible, I recommend practicing your isolations in front of a mirror. I find that isolating the hoop in front of a mirror can be very helpful in showing me what necessary adjustments I need to make to my hoop to improve my isolations. Now let's say if you don't have a mirror to practice your isolations in front of, then I recommend using your vision and focusing on one part of the hoop as you isolate the hoop. Generally, I like to focus on the top part of the hoop or focus on the part at which I begin my hand roll inside the hoop, making that, uh, that grip switch to the other side of the hoop. And generally what I'm watching for it, when I focus my vision on one part of the hoop is if there is any unwanted movement or that hoop kind of strays away from the center, then I can make necessary adjustments to the hoop to improve that isolation. If you plan on learning how to do more advanced hoop isolations, then I recommend learning how to isolate your hoop in both directions, as well as learning how to isolate your hoop using your other hand. With the vast amount of possible ways you can isolate a hoop, I consider hoop isolations to be its own genre within hooping. I recommend exploring different hoop isolations. Some possible hoop isolation related tricks include vertical cat eyes, horizontal cat eyes, two-handed isolations, and many others as well. Thank you everyone out there for watching my video on how to do a basic hoop isolation. May the hoop be with you when performing your isolations. Thank you and enjoy. Goodbye. Thank you.